Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I always appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in. I am Herc. This is my first time doing a video with myself in it. And um, I thank you again for taking the time to tune in. It is a early Saturday morning here in New Jersey. My wife and I went out last night for a concert to kind of do, it was a, a one year anniversary, uh, excuse me, our nine year anniversary last month. But the date for the concert was today. So we kind of celebrated the anniversary yesterday. And my son slept out at my parents house and I'm like oh, I'll be able to wake up late uh, this morning and sleep in finally once which is rare because he's always up early in the morning and what time did I wake up this morning 6 45 a.m. Uh, so I I said let me put the time to good use and so I'm making a YouTube video with you guys um, today I want to talk about one of the uh, comic book mediums that I most love uh, comic books are, you know, most of us are familiar with this. This is what mainly uh, folks read today, uh, normal size comic book. And, um, you know, nothing wrong with that. This is, I love, I love all comic books. But there are many different kinds. There are digest comics. You know, these are not sold as much today with the exception, I think, of like Archie and like Sonic the Hedgehog. Those things are always at like the supermarket checkout line, right? Um... And there's also the pocket comics. These things were different from Digest in that they were kind of made to resemble, pop, you know, paperback books more. Um, you know, but these were great too. Many of them were in color. I always liked these because it could fit in your back pocket, or you know, sometimes you can't uh, take, you know, a comic book like this with you on your commute to work. Uh, an oversized book like this, a convention special, you know, which doesn't really follow any particular size format other than the publisher's desired size, you know, but the pocket book, co pocket comics I like because, you know, it just fit in your back pocket. Today I'm going to talk about treasury comic books and how I kind of got involved in treasury comic books. This year I saw a lot of four on eBay a couple of years ago and I was like, I gotta have it. I had never seen it before. Um, I Spider-Man has always been my favorite character and I you know the ad didn't say 10 by 13 inches which is what the size of treasury comic books normally were um, he didn't have anything in the photo to kind of like gauge the size of the book like I've taken pictures for certain things that I'm selling and I've you know put my remote control my TV remote next to it to give you guys an idea because we kind of all know what a TV remote looks like the size and so you know I bought these. They came. I bought a total of four. I only have three left now because I, I sold the other one and it made some of my money back. But I'm like, I thought that these would be great, like, investment. They were near men copies. All of them seemed to be unread. And I'm thinking, like, I have a three-year-old son. I might be able to give one of these to him down the line. It will be something that he hopefully appreciates as well. And so that's how it started for me. Again, I was thinking I was going to get, you know, this with Superman and Spider-Man on it. Uh, but I ended up getting something way different and way better. And so this is a great book here, 1976, The Amazing Spider-Man and Superman. Uh, this is extra special because the first ever superhero crossover between Marvel and DC is right here in my hands. This was the first time that they had ever had done a crossover, and it was in Treasury comic book format. Um... So I then wanted to know more. I went to Google and I found an awesome website called treasurycomics.com, way better than Wikipedia. Anything that you would want to know about any treasury comic book, it's on this website. And I found out a little bit more about what was the deal with these? When did they occur? Why did they stop? And so in 1972, uh, in the early 1970s, I, you know, there was a slowdown in the newsstands with comic book sales. And so the publisher companies were trying to figure out ways to spur sales. And they thought that if they did a big book, a 10 by 13 comic book, that they could charge more. And it would be relatively zero to no uh, manufacturing costs for them to, to make them, you know, for the extra paper. So this was a $2 book back in 1976, you know, as opposed to in 19, early 1970s where Bronze Age comic books started off at 15 cents and then they went up to 25 cents, if I'm not mistaken, and then 35. So two bucks, you know, but it didn't cost them any more to manufacture and so they were able to, you know, make more profit. And so in 1972, DC was the first to start doing the treasuries and then in 1974, Marvel followed. Um, and, uh, 
for a long while there, it seemed that it was a success for them because DC went all the way until the late 80s, maybe 1980, and then Marvel kind of stopped around 1982. You know, so that was a, a long while, almost a decade, where Treasury comic books were a thing that people could buy. So I'm just going to show off some of the ones that I have. There are many, many different kinds of Treasury comic books. If you go to treasurycomics.com, they have a gallery, and you can see every book made. And when you select a certain book, when you want to get an idea of what's out there, it'll bring up a synopsis of each uh, comic, who the writer and the, uh, you know, the the artists were that were involved and you'll get a little bit of an idea of, of that book so I'm just going to share a handful because there's so many I can't share them all but just to give you an idea I'm a Marvel guy so I'm going to start with the Marvel and the very first book that Marvel did in 1974 was The Amazing Spider-Man now what's interesting about this is that uh, DC when they were doing when they first started publishing a lot of their issues were like all like a famous first issues many of them were retelling origin stories of certain characters but they were a little bit more scattered about with uh, how they were doing and Marvel they started with their guy they started with Spider-Man and then they followed each issue on a different character and there seemed to be a more methodical approach the way that Marvel did it and um, I think it was more in my personal opinion I think it was more successful for them but this was the first one that they did the very first issue is Spider Amazing Spider-Man number 11 with uh, the Green Goblin and uh, there are some other stories there's a nice story here with the Fantastic Four and Johnny Storm that Jack Kirby did the artwork for and Steve Dicko was uh, also Steve Dicko as well, Jack Kirby. But what I love most about this is that it has a really cool, hopefully you can see it here, um, kind of like uh, an introduction to Spider-Man and his powers, how he got them, some of his secrets, you know, his spider sense, and it gives you the lowdown on all things Spider-Man. And I really like that, you know. So this was the first one that they did. This was a fun read. There are different stories in there. I like the one with the Johnny Storm that I was telling about and uh, Spider-Man because they kind of like have a playful rivalry in it. And there's some, you know, some lighthearted action scenes. You know, they're not trying to take each other's heads off, but it's pretty fun. And then the rest of the Fantastic Four come and it's uh, also a nice little exchange with, uh, with uh, the Invisible Woman and Spider-Man that was flirtatious, which I enjoyed. So... The Spider-Man vs. Superman was the first uh, crossover between superheroes. This next book from 1975 was the first ever collaboration between Marvel and DC. It's The Wizard of Oz, uh, the official movie adaptation. I'm sorry for that glare, but um, you know, I guess I'll have to try to find a better lighting situation for the next video. Um, again, I'm kind of new to this, so please bear with me. Uh, but this was a really cool uh, you know, book. It's the movie basically so if you saw the movie you kind of have an idea of what it is but it's nice to see the beautiful artwork um you know on these larger 10 by 13 pages and so i wanted to show that because it's a pretty significant thing it was in 1975 that the two companies finally did something together and um you know i thought that's pretty cool there was also a second one to this called the land of oz with the beautiful cover by john ramita and i think they were supposed to do a third one but I think Treasury comic books might have stopped by the time that that had, and that never happened. Next one I'm going to show many of you have seen, especially if you go to comic conventions and you pass by Neil Adams' table. He has poster prints of this. He's got hardcover copies of this. It's the Superman vs. Muhammad Ali Treasury comic book. This was from uh, 1978. And what's really cool about this, if you look closely, there's a lot of people ringside. Uh, you know, to watch this fight. And you can see in that one corner right here, there's uh, Batman, uh, uh, Jimmy Carter right here, and then Batman. And on the inside cover, they have a list of all the names with numbers so that you can figure out who's who. But uh, this is pretty, and it continues on the back cover as well. Uh, who wins this fight? I'll have to let you read that and find out, but it's interesting. And the, the very last page, uh, it shows my beautiful pinup with Ali and Superman, where they both agree well, they're both the greatest of all times, because that was Ali's thing, he's the greatest of all time, but in this, him and Superman are the greatest of all time. So this is a beautiful, classic, iconic cover by Neil Adams. Uh, one day I'll eventually take it to a con and get him to sign it. Uh, the next one is 
probably some of the most fun uh, reading that I've had in the Treasury comic book format. And it's uh, the Treasury adaptation of Star Wars. There were two of them. This issue here only covers issues one through three. They did it in two different treasuries. This was in 1977. The second issue, volume two, carries uh, issues number four through six. And so this was um, probably one of my favorite treasuries. You know, Star Wars, I'm a big Star Wars guy. And to see this story on these large pages, I mean, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so they did these two issues in 1977. I'm trying to show you a nice page here. You know, you see Darth Vader standing there with one of his uh, one of his guards. And you know, they they did this in 1977. And I guess that when they were trying to capitalize on the wave, the Star Wars you know wave, there was a late 70s. Every kid in the world probably was paying attention to that stuff. And they did another treasury. It says Star Wars number three. I'm not really sure why they did a second one because they already did it. But this one was nice, I guess, because it contained all six issues in one volume instead of two, like the other ones. And it was 114 pages. So it was kind of nice to have, um, you know, have the story in all one volume. And they really come to life. I mean, the, you know, trying to show you through the, the webcam doesn't do justice. When you're sitting on your couch with a nice cup of coffee, or in my case, uh, this morning I'm drinking a cup of tea, it's really, that really comes to life. Very enjoyable reading. And then in 1980, they, of course, followed up with The Empire Strikes Back. You know, this uh, particular cover, uh, the, you know, they did a, a Marvel Magazine Super Special. I believe it had this cover. You know, they also did um, a paper, a pocket bag version. Same exact cover. And, um, you know, what's interesting about this is uh, the way that they show Yoda. Uh, let me just show you here briefly. This is not what Yoda looked like in the movies. That little gray fellow there. And, um, you know, they ended up, I don't know, Marvel made, him, made Yoda look a little bit different, but it was I always found that uh, version a little creepy. I liked our green Yoda that we know today. So that was that. Unfortunately, they stopped making Treasury comic books by the time The Return of the Jedi came around, but Marvel found other ways to get that into the reader's hand. But sadly, they never got a Treasury comic book, which would have been nice. So, aside from the great stories, one of the things that you could find in Treasury comic books was activities, beautiful pinup by artists, pinup artwork. I wanted to show this, this DC House of Mystery, because aside from the great stories that are in here, kind of all spooky horror-related stories, they um, had activities for the kids. So this here, I'm just going to fold this to try to give you, they have a really cool pinup by Sergio Argonis, Aragonis, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, where it's a black and white haunted house with a bunch of uh, ghouls and, and ghosts flying about and tombstones and, you know, they're encouraging you to color it. They also did games. You know, this one requires dice. There was also, again, beautiful pinup artworks here of certain characters. So that was very typical as well to see pit up artwork. Another book I want to show here is great because I you know I like things that are unique, rare, you don't see too often and you don't really see comic book industry um, you know doing uh, stuff like this. You're certainly not going to see this today, let's just be honest here. But DC in 19 I'm not sure what year this is. I want to say it's 1974 perhaps. 1975, and it tells some of the old stories of the Bible, the Garden of Eden, uh, Cain and Abel, and beautiful artwork here by Joe Kubert. Wanted to show one picture, the Garden of Eden. You know, and it's just, it's beautiful artwork. You know, it's beautiful artwork, and they really come to life on these larger 10 by 13 papers. You know, there's more room to play with. And I really like this story as well. It's got an also a nice wraparound with Moses on the back and uh, holding the tablets of the Ten Commandments that God gave him. So this was all. I had to have this, you know. Uh, 
Last one I'm going to show off, we sh most of these that I've been showing were Marvel Treasury Comics. Again, DC started in 72, Marvel followed in 19, uh, 1974, and Marvel went all the way until the early 80s. Um, in 1982, they did even a beautiful G.I. Joe Treasury with the same cover from the original, uh, from the original run. But there were other companies that did it as well. And so here, this last one was a, a giant classic by Whitman of King Kong. This is a Silver Age treasury from 1968. And it's the adaptation of the very first uh, King Kong movie. And, uh, you know, again, some of these stories were just perfect for this. I mean, think about it. King Kong was a huge, massive character. And seeing him on 10 by 13 pages, just it just made sense. You know, and it's a shame that treasuries are no longer popular. DC did a uh, try to do a resurgence of treasuries in the early 2000s with a lot of uh, Alex Ross stuff, like uh, Kingdom of Heaven or something like that. And then there was a one that they did with just Shazam, and then one with just Batman, and they all um, had some unique. I forget. Well, I think the one with Batman said War, and the one with uh, Superman said Peace. You know, but after Alex Ross, who and Alex Ross is a big. If, for those of you who know Alex Ross, of course, he's a big Treasury guy. Another comic book artist that you might not know of, Eric Larson, Savage Dragon uh, artist. He's also a big Treasury comic book guy. So these, um, you know, just wanted to share this with you guys. You know, I know some folks again like me. I until I stumbled on that Superman versus uh, Spider Man, I didn't know Treasury comic books even existed. You know, um, I just simply didn't. I grew up in uh, 1981, and I really didn't start, like, collecting comic books on my own until the early 90s. You know, um, I was introduced to comic books in the 80s by my dad, who would bring home Spider-Man comic books off the spinner rack at the Port Authority. But, like, me going to, uh, you know, a comic book shop on my own, I was doing that in, you know, 90, 91, I, would, I guess is when I started. So, I hope that you enjoyed this. Check out treasurycomics.com if you did. Um... I also have a few treasuries for sale on my Etsy website. Uh, some ones that are in, in better quality condition. You can find probably um, you know, cheaper ones on eBay perhaps. But I have some good good quality conditions for sale on my Etsy. Uh, my, which you can see at the, uh, the logo is on the banner of my YouTube page. And I'm not really going to use this uh, channel to promote stuff like that often. I just figured because we're talking about treasuries today, if you had a desire, you could buy some uh, through my Etsy shop if there was a desire or you could also find them on your own at Ebay's or comic conventions I've looked for them at cons they usually go for a little bit more money there um, especially the Superman vs. Spider-Man and the Neil Adams uh, with Muhammad Ali and uh, Bat uh, Superman you know some of those um, you know are and the first one I showed some of the ones I showed those are some of the ones that may go for a little bit more money at cons because those are the, the big ones but I thank you for tuning in I appreciate it please subscribe please like and I look forward to seeing you down the line. Thanks.